hi, Genki Call here with Stormheim for the week of May 22nd, 2023. Things are going to look a little different in this video than usual. We're going to do things out of order because it's not actually reset yet. So I'm going to go over what I can right now until reset hits because I need a head start on this because I have an early appointment tomorrow and I'm not going to be able to do all the things I normally do, but I'm going to do as much as I can. So the troops that you can get here in Stormheim, some of them are very good, some of them are meh, but um, I'm going to go over everything we've got. First of all, we have Jotner Storm Shield. His spell is okay. He does true damage to an enemy boosted by barriered allies and giant allies. An additional 7 damage for each barriered ally and each giant ally. It can do some nice true damage, but it's only to one enemy. There's no board control. But his third trait is awfully nice. I think he's underutilized for this barrier, and there are other troops that can do this, but um, th it is pretty nice. Um, would I go for him specifically? No. But you do absolutely... I do absolutely recommend going for Mistralis. She is one of my favorite troops. She is, besides Ironhawk, I think should be one of the first crafts for somebody that's new to the game because she is so incredibly useful. She does splash damage. That is, it tells you right here on the side, damage to a troop and half damage to the adjacent troops. So let's say we have these four troops right here. They'd be on this side. But anyway, you hit this troop or this troop it's going to hit three troops if there is a if you hit this troop and this is blank it will only hit this troop with the splash because it has to be nearby you can't hit something with splash with you know like throwing water on something you can't splash onto something that's too far away so if they're not touching they won't hit but she's going to hit one to four random enemies jumble the board get an extra turn that means if you get a match four from the jumbling the board, you can keep going. Every time you get a match four, she's going to enchant all allies. So she's super, super useful. She's very safe to use for somebody that is a lower level player. Very, very useful. That enchant is fantastic. And um, also amazing in Guild Wars. I love using my Mistralis in Guild Wars. She's one of my absolute faves for that purpose. So... Yeah, she's a really good one, and if you've got event keys, I recommend going for her. But also, I really enjoy the Onyx Giant. If you use this guy properly, he is very effective at destroying things. Now, the scatter damage isn't that much. I mean, 100 scatter damage is very nice, don't get me wrong. But, you know, it's broken up between four troops, if there are still four troops over there. But then you convert eight gems of a chosen color to uber doom skulls. Those do 10 damage each, even if you are entangled. So you're entangled, you get four of these uber doom skulls together. You just did 40 damage to them, even without any attack bonus to that. So not even taking this into effect. Very, very nice. Love those uber doom skulls. And... Um, so the way you do it is you make sure to convert something that has eight gems or fewer on the board. And there will be something on the left side of the board showing you where those, how much, how many of each there are, each color. I'm sorry, I'm a little out of it. Um, you line that up with the skull for a match four and it's beautiful. Love it. Also, you can run him at the front of the team. If you do so, he's going to reduce damage from skulls by 50%. That will not count with the uh, that reduction does not count towards doom skulls or uber doom skulls and then create two uber doom skulls every time he takes damage if you want to stick him at the front you can do that um i really like him a lot actually handle frost crown she is um she also does splash damage she freezes all affected troops and she summons the summons is very very nice she does um yeah, this is just general splash damage. That's half damage to adjacent troops. And, of course, the freeze is going to keep them from getting an extra turn. Um, she also gives all uh, sorry giant allies two life and magic on four plus gem matches. And she's immune to frozen herself. Jarl Fire Mantle. This guy creates nine red and nine yellow gems, then deals 46 damage to an, en er, sorry, damage to an enemy. 
All right, so the nine red and yellow gems and then deal damage to an enemy. He burns a random enemy on four plus gem matches and you know, these couple other traits as well. He's okay. If you use him with something that does extra damage with fire, that helps. Strength you cannot get because this is only in the vault. The Frostfire King is only from Frostfire Keep. Vidar the Vast, he can be very useful. He's not a consistent devourer, but the more blue you have on the, the board, the more likely he is to devour. There's a 10% flat chance, and then each blue gem on the board will give you an extra 4% chance. Plus, other than that, he does a little bit of damage. He does gain attack, life, and armor when matching 4 plus gems and is immune to stun. And he does double skull damage versus stunned enemies. Then we've got Balder. Oh, Balder is fun. You're going to want multiples of these. this guy running them together. He creates four skulls boosted by blue allies. You have an all-blue team. He's going to create a bunch of, of uh, skulls. Lots of fun to use if you like skull spamming. And he gains one life on four plus gem matches. Next, we have the Bone Biter. He's going to... He, yeah, he's going to do damage to an enemy. If they're undead, he does double damage with a 50% chance to devour them and gains 5 life. He does double skull damage versus an undead. Frostfire Troll, you cannot get. That's from Frostfire Keep. Next is Half Grim, Half Giant. This guy is our God Slayer, so he has that 3 to 5 times skull, uh, damage to anything with a red border, including the bosses in the dungeon. The Gem Dragon, Zulgoth, whatever it may be. Um, and then it's boosted by his life with a 3 to 1 ratio. So divide this number by 3 and that, add that onto here. Plus the 3 to 5 times damage if they're a boss. And uh, yeah, that's it for him. Uh, next up we have the Ice Witch. She does damage to an enemy, freezes them if the enemy dies, gives 3 magic to all enemies. She's alright. She's better in Arena than anything else. Um, she does have that bonus purple mana from purple gem matches so you match three you actually get four it's plus one with this every time you make a purple match it does feed back into herself which is very nice and she gets extra magic every time an ally casts a spell next is keg hammer whom you will get if you complete st or when you complete the storyline here he does magic to an enemy eliminates five magic he does damage to an enemy. Eliminates five magic from them. If it's a giant, he does triple damage. He does double skull damage versus giants, and he starts battles with full mana. Always nice to have the empowers. Scrymere the Lofty cleanses and barriers and allies, gives them life, moves them to the front of the team. So cleansed, barriered, extra life, but they get to sit up there at the front of the team. Um, he also summons a light storm when an enemy dies, which does feed back into himself, and he's got some extra life every 4 plus gem match. The Sapphire Giant does damage to an enemy, converts 5 red gems to blue giant gems. Those blue ge or those giant gems give you 5 mana whenever you match them just for the gem itself. Um, he also creates a blue giant gem when he takes skull damage, and he has 50% skull damage reduction. And he does frozen when inflicting, or he inflicts frozen when doing skull damage, so he is meant to run at the front of the team. You can always just not do this third trait if you don't want him creating the blue giant gems. Unless you're like me and just automatically trade everything. <laughs> <laughs> Zephyros. This guy destroys a column, deals scatter damage boosted by yellow gems destroyed at pl an additional plus 10 scatter damage for each yellow gem you destroy. He also has the air link bonus yellow mana from yellow gem matches and plus huge as well. Next is the Berserker. He does a range of damage to an enemy boosted by his missing life with a 2 to 1 ratio. So if he's missing 20 life, he'll do an, ex an extra 10 damage. Then he takes 2 damage and gains 4 attack. Now that 2 damage, just make sure that he is missing some life to boost his, to boost his spell, I suppose. Um, but he also recovers 1 life at the start of each turn and gains 1 life on 4 plus gem matches. So, I mean, it kind of evens out. The Dwarven Slayer, he's a Berserker. Well, he's a Berserker. He kills himself, does damage to an enemy, and dies gloriously. Can be cast once only. Obviously. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so you know, he, he goes kamikaze on them. Um, so immune to all status effects, devour, lycanthropy, and mana burn. You know, he's a sacrificial lamb. 
kind of, sort of, maybe. You have something to summon in his place. That's all good. Fire Giant, this guy is good to work with Yarl Fire Mantle. He's my favorite to run with Yarl. Um, he takes the yellow that Yarl creates and then the burn. He does triple damage with his spell if they're burning. And he creates 10 red gems if the enemy dies. And that feeds back into Yarl. They work very well together. They're both giants. You get bonus red mana from red gem matches. He doesn't use the red, but, you know... Anything you use with him will if you build a nice team, a good synergy. I'm not speaking very well today. I apologize. <sighs> Bamorian. This guy does uh, destroys a 5x5 five five blocks. That's taking all of those gems as if they were matched. He does damage to a random enemy and stuns them. And he has the huge uh, trait and inflicts stun when doing skull damage. If you put him up at the start front of the team, he has no skull damage reduction. However... Can't get the Frostfire Witch. She's from Frostfire Keep, Ice Spire Shaman. Does light splash damage. That's full damage to whatever you target. And then each of the adjacent troops, anything they're touching, will get, get one quarter of that damage. Um, he'll do that to two random enemies, boosted by blue allies and enemies. An extra three for each blue ally and each blue enemy. And mm, he has the big trait. Um, nothing really special about this guy. The Storm Knight does true damage to an enemy, and if the enemy uses blue mana, destroy a column and gain 5 attack. He does do double skull damage versus blue enemies. That can always be fun, and reduce damage from skulls by 25%. The Urska Wanderer does damage to an enemy, boosted by the enemy's attack. Then he freezes the enemy, and does double skull damage versus frozen enemies. And he has skull damage reduction, so he's okay to run at the front of the team. Could be useful for that, depending on what kind of team you build. The Flame Maiden removes all blue gems, does damage to the enemy, boosted by the blue gems removed. You will not get any mana out of it, but it will deny the blue to your enemy and boost her spell. Um, she is a bounty hunter. Now, I wouldn't use her for that purpose personally, but uh, she also burns enemy when enemies when doing skull damage if you want to throw her up at the front of the team for that purpose. I wouldn't. She has no skull damage reduction, but that's just me. The Frost Giant, he does damage to a random enemy boosted by skulls, then freezes them, and has the big trait. Can't get this guy. He's from the faction. Next is the Ice Wraith. This guy is another bounty hunter. He does damage to an enemy and freezes them. If they're already frozen, steal five mana. Um, so that reduces this to just five more mana that you would need to get him filled up. And he inflicts frozen when doing skull damage. That's about it. Uh, 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 South Render. This guy does a range of damage just to the first enemy. That's, that's it. That's all he does. Next is the Valkyrie. She's actually very useful. She transforms any color you want to blue and gains some souls. That's always nice if you need some extra souls. She has the, the water link, so bonus blue mana from blue gem matches. Uh, doesn't feed back into herself, but it doesn't matter. You're going to get lots... I mean, if you're casting her, you're going to want to set it up so you have a match for her with the blue so that you can get an extra turn and um, feed your team with that. Next is the Arctic Fox. He creates five blue gems boosted by frozen enemies. Each frozen enemy will give you an additional two blue gems. And he's stealthy, so you can't target him. And he, if you stick him at the front of the team, he'll inflict frozen when doing skull damage. Oh, we have more. All right, there are three more that you can get. You will not be able to get the penguin. That's only from Guild Wars. North Render creates eight blue gems. Straight up, that's it. Gain some attack. Throw him at the front of the team. No skull damage reduction, but he does freeze them. He gets the extra attack. And he's immune to frozen himself. Next is the Serpent. Poison the first two enemies and create nine red gems. Uh, and gain some life. I mean... Uh, I mean, the poison is good for Arena, but... Eh. Poison enemies when doing skull damage. Unless you're running with something that does has a bonus off of poison, I can't really see using this guy. 
Except he is immune to Hunter's Mark, so that's nice. But Snowy Owl, this is the lowest rarity card we have here and extremely useful. I love using this with Mistralis. Destroy all purple gems, that's taking them all off the board as if they were matched. Create seven gems of any color you want. Generally speaking, you're going to want to put it into yellow and loop off of it and just get lots and lots of yellow for your team. It works very nicely. Um, you have also the m bonus purple mana from purple gem matches. As I said, super nice with Mistralis and any other troop that uses yellow and purple. <sighs> now, that's not all. It is reset now because I got waylaid uh, with something. So we're going to get rid of that. And let me restart the game. I'll be right back. Alright, the last troop we have for Stormheim can be found, not there, oh, 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 wrong button, in the shop. Oh, yes, I don't care. Thank you. Shop. Before we go to that last troop, head into resources, grab your spoils of war, get all ten of these if you can, assuming that you still need event keys. I do, because I must have them. Um, and head into the weekly event, grab your... Glory Troop. Now this guy, the Grave Giant, is going to do damage to an enemy. If they're deathmarked, do double damage, then create two deathmarked gems. He also inflicts deathmark when doing skull damage. He has no skull damage reduction, but, you know, I consider him a throwaway troop, I suppose. Um, or you can just use him, like, with something that death marks to do double damage. It could be very effective, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure I'll have to use it, but always recommend getting these up to mythic level if you can, because that is a guaranteed level 20 troop for the kingdom when you need it for your power levels. So, let's look at the adventure board real quickly. See, uh, nothing really special here. Um, but the campaign tasks are now available to look at, and they are to kill blue enemies in any battle, win any battle, win 40 battles, and match blue gems, match 600 blue gems total. That's all five tiers for, you know, these are the totals. 125, 40, and 600. That's it. That's it, and you'll be done. And this week will... Ooh, looks like the new weapon will be available this week if you have the paid pass, the 999 pass. <sighs> I'm a little distracted. A lot going on here. Um, next up, let's see. I do have the world event scoring for you. We're, let's go ahead and do that real quickly. We do have Guild Wars next week, but let's go over the Guild Wars stuff here. Not Guild Wars. This is the world event. Oh, geez. Let's back it up a little bit. I am not going to be able to do any teams for the world event right now. I have got to get some sleep. I have an early appointment. Sorry about that. Um, Tesla provided us with a horseless carriage to aid in our travels. Our first storp, storp would be Stormheim. Ah! First stop would be Stormheim. Jotner was reliable, if not always friendly, and the giants followed all the gods of war. Perhaps they would know something. Then we go in here. Jotner was out of sorts. Undead giants were rising in his realm. We offered to help, hoping to receive some information in return. Now, we only have one kind of collectible right now, or this time, which is super nice. It makes it much easier to track things and add up the points. This is super easy. It's rarity order. Just avoid the Yeti and you'll be fine. Harder battles will give you extra points. Obsidious will give you the most points, but he's only going to show up every fifth battle. So if you skip Obsidious, you won't see him again until another five battles or until you defeat four more enemies. So be aware of that. He only shows up every fifth battle just to reiterate. Um, as far as the shop goes, uh, I'll go ahead and buy a couple tiers here. The token, oh shoot, it doesn't say here. All right, let's uh, let's go ahead and buy a couple tiers here. Just, uh, 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 then let's see what we've got here for teams. What do we have to choose from? So it has to be giants. Any color giant. So, yeah, cool. Um, lots of possibilities here. This is boosting only 
believe this is only boosting spells. Yep, spells only. So Baldur's only going to work for a little bit if you decide to do a triple Baldur team. Oh, well, I will do... Um, I will do... My God, my brain. <sighs> I'll do some teams when I can, folks. I, I will do it as soon as I can. So as far as this goes, make sure that these match the color on the side here. We've got green, red. This one should be blue. And this one should be purple, and this one should be brown, and this one should be yellow. Yellow! Alrighty. So, also, last Guild Wars, I forgot to buy my Sentinels, so I'm going to do that right now. I at least like to buy two tiers. Not required by my guild. Some guilds require you to buy five tiers. Some, you know, they like to tell you what to do, and that is fine. Um, but mine does not require it. So for the moment, I'm just going to do this. And whoops, I did not mean to do that. But, you know, that's cool. Uh, as far as this goes, I think I'm down a little bit here. And I'm kind of, um, I'm not too far down. Um I'm digressing a little bit because I'm very scatterbrained at the moment. We've moved back to bra from bracket 5 to bracket 7 because we were at the bottom of the tier. Oh, that's all right, though. That's okay. We're going to have fun with Guild Wars. Ha ha fun. But <laughs> I'm losing my mind. All right. Let's go over a few more things here. Um, so this week, Stormheim troops and giants each get 10% boost to their skills. If they're a giant from Stormheim, they'll get plus 20% to their skills. And if you take the new glory troop into PvP and Explorer, and or Explorer, you'll gain an extra 40 souls per battle. Also, let's see, Guild Wars, that, yep. Kingdom Pass. This is the last week for Kingdom Pass, as far as I know. I'm pretty sure. As far as upcoming events this week, tomorrow we have uh, Frostfire Keep for the Faction Assault. On Wednesday, we have Zephyrus' Cloud. Super cute little thing. And Thursday, we have Giant Class. Hold on just a second. Sorry, that's Titan Class, which is super, super useful. It's a really good class for Giants. And then uh, this weekend, we have Bounty. And it should be fun. <sighs> anyway, I am sure I'm missing things. Let's go ahead and pop into the Soul Forge real quickly because I'm not going to be able to do that anytime soon. Let's check if Centurgon's in here and he is not. Darn. All right, and then let's just see. Undine. Lord of Slaughter is fantastic. Um, Astro Mother, meh. Fairy Godmother, situational. And let's see if there's anything. We've got a Doomed Weapon in here. And Ice Aegis is fun. Another Doom Weapon. Anyway, uh, I know I'm forgetting stuff. I'm sorry. I'm so scatterbrained. But um, I did give you the scoring on the world event, right? I'm sure I did. Yes, I did. Okay, cool. If you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comments section down below. Please like and subscribe. I'll have more for you as soon as possible. And we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.